Ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant night to one and all. Psalm 73, verse 26 to 28 says, My flesh and my heart fails, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. They that are far from you shall perish. You have destroyed all of them that go a-whoring from you. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all your works. You know, we may fail at doing things, but one thing is certain, God doesn't fail. If you put your trust in Him, you can't go wrong. We're going to look at Zack Snyder's trilogy. There's some very interesting themes that run through his trilogy. Of course, it started with Man of Steel. And then it continued onwards with Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. And then the last of his trilogy has been Justice League. And I want to show you guys just one thing that I find that's being repeated. Actually, it's two things, but they are based on the same subject of death. So, let's begin. So, in Man of Steel, there was a close-up shot of Jonathan Kent, who had died. And you would see the date and how old he was. He lived from 1951 to 1997. And you look at the tombstone or tomb head, headstone, anything you want to call it. And there's a beautiful flower in there. And it says, Beloved Husband and Father. And I found this interesting because this is a shot Zach did where... Lewis Lane is looking at the tombstone of Jonathan Kent. So, Martha Kent and all of her research, when she meets Martha Kent, it leads her to this tombstone or this tomb head. Now, why that's interesting to me is because this is in Man of Steel. And in Justice League, at the beginning of the movie, we get a similar shot with Clark Joseph Kent. He also has this little flower on his head, he, on, the, on the headpiece or the, the tombstone or the headstone, whatever you want to call it. But the interesting thing here is there is no date. And later on in the movie, we revisit that tombstone. We get to look at it even closer. And there's no date of when he was born or when he died. I thought that was hinting to us that Clark would not stay in the grave forever. But more importantly, as I said before, these movies, they have themes running through them. And so it's interesting that in Man of Steel, whenever you see the tombstone or the tombstone of Jonathan Kent, it is an opportunity to bring to remembrance him. And so Clark starts to bring to remembrance in a relevant way, telling the story to Lewis of what Jonathan Kent believed. And he believed it so strongly, what he did. And it's interesting, this tombstone that we have with Clark Joseph Kent actually allows us to really get the gravity of Superman's death and his loss to the world. And that is in not only the introduction to the movie but throughout the movie there's emphasis on the fact that Superman is dead and why that is so important that people have the values that he had because those values now are absent in the world so I found that very interesting that the film was paying tribute to Superman in his absence now also very interesting is Heroes Park in the beginning of Justice League, we actually, this is a shot from the beginning of Justice League where we're looking at Heroes Park. And something that particularly caught my attention very quickly was the fact that the formation of police cars in Heroes Park, even when people were coming to the park and paying their tributes, 
that the formation of the police cars is absolutely identical to when we see that formation in Heroes Park later on in the movie when Superman is brought back to life. It is the absolute, almost identical formation. And I thought, why is that so? And it dawned on me, not to try and do Dawn of Justice or anything, it dawned on me that these police people, they were there to maintain the park and apparently they kept a certain formation. Why exactly? I don't know. But they did. Okay? And I find it very interesting. And then in the beginning, you see people paying tributes. And you see they have all their tributes and stuff right here. There's a railing that separates uh, the people from otherwise. And what's interesting about this is the heroes, when they meet Superman, they're past that railing. Now, Heroes Park before that didn't have a railing. Uh, this is Heroes Park in Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. And incidentally, we have a shot almost identical to that <laughs> in Justice League. So I just, I thought that was very interesting. Um, this is, of course, post the damage to Heroes Park with Doomsday interacting with Superman. But what's interesting about this, Heroes Park is basically the list of all the heroes from the Metropolis disaster. Okay, and this is what Heroes Park looked like when it wasn't destroyed by Doomsday uh, fighting Superman. Now, what's even more interesting about this is, like I said, Zack Snyder uses a lot of repetition. And so, for instance, in Justice League, we have a repetition of Heroes Park. We see it in the beginning when we're introduced to it, and then we see it again later on in the movie because there's a significance to that. And very much so in BVS, the same thing happened. B, uh, Heroes Park was there. We saw the defacing of Superman statue by um, Wally. Okay, and then we see Heroes Park again in BVS. This time, Doomsday <laughs> uh, slams Superman into Heroes Park, and basically finishes off the job that Wally started with Superman destroying the statue of Superman um, and that's of course a metaphor for what Doomsday he's created to do which is to destroy God so he destroys the statue of Superman blast Superman through the statue um, so that's interesting as well as it also reflects certain people of the world's view of Superman what they wanted to do and this is almost like a, a crescendo of all those things. You know, Lex Luthor kind of epitomizes that. Batman was anti-Superman. Some people of the world were saying, kill him, kill him, kill him. And they had Superman, uh, uh, you know, hung as if he was lynched, right? Um, so there are certain people in the world, Wally was one of them, who believed that Superman wasn't a hero and that actually he was a plague on the earth and he needed to be removed. All right? So it's very interesting that the first defacing of Superman started with Wally because of the bad experience he had in Metropolis. And ironically, Heroes Park is the place where Wally will express his views about Superman as a false god. And interestingly enough, that's the view that Lex Luthor has. He says to Superman, they need to see with their eyes uh, the fraud you are. And so it's interesting that in BVS, Lex Luthor's views are not really so strange to a lot of views of the people of the world, including Batman had those views. So it's not it's not really strange, okay? Um, and interestingly, the product of Lex Luthor, which is Doomsday, which he's uh, there just to destroy Superman, destroy the world, destroy everything, <laughs> uh, he finishes the job that Wally was trying to do. Um, now, what's even more interesting about that is that we come back to Heroes Park a number of times and the shot that we see the perspective of Superman watching at a destructive doomsday it's weird the perspective that um, Zack Snyder get, keeps on giving so he gives different perspectives so for instance when we first see Heroes Park this is the first time we see Heroes Park we see people walking through the park and people giving their tributes to people so you have these two ladies walking here uh, some people sitting down eating and lunching some other people paying tributes to their children. Wally's daughter seemed to have died in the accident, which is why he put her picture down there. Seemed as though her mother was alive. Um, 
And so you see people paying tributes and so on, walking through the park. There's Superman there, all right? He's the big hero. There are a lot of heroes, but he's one of the biggest heroes there because he saved the city. Now, what's interesting about that is that we get... Uh, uh, Zack pans out and kind of pans in as he's sort of t turning the angle so you can see Wally. And you see Heroes Park here from a distance, all right? That's the perspective. So you're seeing the big picture of Heroes Park from a certain angle. And you see the city, and you see it's a sort of place where people reflect with their families. You have other people sitting down, remembering. So it's remembrance. Like I said, the theme here is death. So we, we talked about remembrance with Jonathan Kent, for instance. And you have Clark here. And now we come to Heroes Park, and there's reflection uh, on, um, on death. You see some people coming, dropping their flowers and stuff. Tribute to Superman, who actually ends up dying himself. <laughs> and so he's one of those memorials they're paying to, which is very interesting with Heroes Park. Of course, Superman comes to life here. But let me just go back to the death part. So here we have people here. And you can see this lady, she's actually showing photos of somebody who died, and they're kind of sitting down there reflecting in remembrance. And here's the interesting thing. The next time we see Heroes Park, the perspective now is we've got this guy, Doomsday, who's like Mr. Death himself. That's all he's there to do is destroy and kill. All right? People try to liken Doomsday to the Incredible Hulk, but I'll say this. Doomsday is bigger than the Incredible Hulk, and two... Doomsday does nothing else than destroy. Doomsday is a destructive machine. All Doomsday does is destroy. He lives to kill. He lives to destroy. The Hulk does not live to do that. The, the Hulk is all about rage. He's berserker rage. He's, he's, he lives to be angry. He feeds off of rage. Doomsday feeds off of death and energy. Okay? So those are the differences. But anyway, so this is Mr. Death in front of Superman here. And I find this very interesting because, once again, this is Superman facing his mortality. Zack Snyder was talking about Superman needs to know what it is to face his mortality. And basically, Doomsday is, he represents the metaphor for death, mortality. And this is Superman facing him. And I find this very interesting, the perspective where Doomsday is taller than Superman. He's bigger than Superman, so Superman has to look up at him. I find that very interesting. Now, why that is interesting is because in Justice League, this is the follow-up right here, in Justice League, we get a shot where Lois Lane is looking at the ruins. But she's not really looking at the ruins. She's looking at the fallen Superman, right? And she's looking very sadly. She's behind the railing, so the angle's a little bit of weight. You see the damage that was caused when Doomsday smashed Superman into... Memorial Park. It's crazy because Doomsday is saying, all right, I'm going to make you <laughs> become like one of them. <laughs> you, the people have to remember you because you're going to be dead. OK, so he smashed him into Memorial Park. So I find all of these imagery. I'm not saying that Doomsday purposely did that, but I'm just saying Zach's painting this imagery. And now he follows up with the aftermath with Lewis Lane here in the beginning. I just I love it. I love it. And it's, it's on a similar angle. It's a, a bit, you know, it's a little bit further away. Uh, it's a slightly different angle because Superman was somewhere here in these ruins. Doomsday was somewhere standing here. But the point is, now you get the, the ripple effect. Now Doomsday has accomplished what he's supposed to do, which is kill Superman, kill as much as possible. And now people have to remember Superman just like those other names on the pillars of the Memorial Park. And I find that very interesting. So Zach has that follow through on there, visually, of course. There's no word spoken. And then what's interesting is that memorial becomes a memorial in a different kind of way. And when we see this memorial next time, we see a risen Superman. Okay? And now we're looking at Superman. <laughs> He's actually taken over the role of Doomsday. He's like Doomsday to the Justice League because Superman is very destructive. And he's, he's actually taking himself and throwing himself and saying, is like, screw Superman. <laughs> I was almost going to say F Superman because he throws his own head. You see what I'm saying? The head that you saw lying here, which is Superman in ruins, now broken Superman is literally going to smash the whole idea of Superman. He's willing to just give up the whole idea of Superman because he doesn't know who he is and become Doomsday. He was literally going to become Doomsday. 
the thing that he was beholding. It's just crazy. And I find that so cool that Zack Snyder is able to do all these kinds of things, this kinds of imagery, this visual imagery that you can read into and, and see more. Of course, there's much more ruins here. And that wasn't Superman's fault what happened to this pillar here. But it's almost the identical angle that Lewis Lane was looking at the ruins of Superman here. It's almost the identical angle. It's a little closer up because the Justice League is, is higher up than Lewis was. Lewis was behind the barricade. But it's still crazy. So I just wanted to highlight that. Mortality, death. And in repetition, using repetition and sometimes the same, almost the same angles and almost the same shots, Zack Snyder is building a story based on that. I just thought it was just brilliant and I thought I would share it with you guys on YouTube. I hope you guys enjoy it. Leave your comments in the comment section below. You guys have a great one.